Intel Pentium 3, huh? something that you shouldn't normally do. I know, it's gonna be weird. You're like, why are you doing this, Gavin? And it's because I wanna do it, because it's fun, because it's an experiment, as I like to do on this channel. I've done things before on this channel that doesn't make, they don't make much sense. Why would you do that? And this is one of them. So, I have an i5-4690K in the system that I've built that I use on a daily basis. That is an overclockable processor. But you know what else that means? That also means it's an underclockable processor. So I'm gonna be running the processor at my overclock that I run at normally, which is 3.9 gigahertz. And then we're gonna be going lower than that. So I'm gonna be going 2.5, 1.5, and then the lowest I can go is 800 megahertz. So I'm gonna test those different clock speeds and um, I'm gonna test them in temperature wise. I'm gonna test them in Cinebench, which gives you a, uh, which is, is like a rendering test, which is purely CPU based. And then I'm playing CSGO and Grand Theft Auto 5, which is a, CSGO isn't very uh, C, uh, CPU intensive, but we're gonna see how much of a bottleneck it creates for the GPU, and then GTA 5 is very CPU intensive. Um, I might also do Minecraft, I'm not sure. I might do Minecraft, depending on how much time I have. Anyway, um, I'm kind of curious as to what will happen. I'm wondering what kind of temperatures we're gonna get, because I know that the higher you put your clock speed, you get exponentially more temperature. So if you go lower clock speed, are we gonna get X minutes? Is like the temperature even gonna rise? Cause I, I mean, I don't know, I'm curious. Um, so we're gonna try this. I know people have done this before when they actually have thermal issues, when their processor is getting too hot. Um, they will underclock it. So I know it will help with thermals. Um, I don't have that issue, I'm running at 3.9 gigahertz right now. And I have an all on liquid cooler. So I haven't had any thermal issues, um, even under full load. So that's not why I'm doing it. I'm just doing it for fun to see what happened. Um, and it'll show how much like clock speed has to do with performance, which obviously it's a lot to do with performance. But I want to test it even more. So um, let's get to this. Let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna be doing some live benchmarking because you know that's the new and trendy thing to do nowadays. So uh, I'm in Windows right now. I'm, right, I'm gonna use, be using Ida64 for all of this, uh, for at least for thermals and clock speed and stuff. So if I go into the Ida64 monitor, well, you guys can't see it, but I'm just. Just trust me, I mean, why would I? Ah, uh, so we are running at a clock speed right now, 3.899 gigahertz, which is basically 3.9 gigahertz. We're basically at 3.9 gigahertz right now. Um, and our temperature is idling, let's say 30, 38, 40. Um, and so we are going to run our Cinebench, and we'll see what our score is. Something's wrong with our AC up here. It's really hot in here. I'm sorry if this fan makes noise. Well, okay, I'll turn it down a little. I'm sorry if this fan makes noise, but I am burning up in here. I'm gonna have to open the door. Ugh. And these lights are also really hot, so. Sorry if it's a little bit noisier than normal, but I'm not gonna die of heat making a video. Run. Run, all right. Now you can see it runs pretty quickly at this clock speed. It has four cores, 3.9 gigahertz. Yeah, so you can see our temperatures immediately shot up to about 70 degrees, 71. Which is, you know, pretty high, but I does I mean, it's all right. It's not that bad. Our fan speed is shot there to counteract that. So we'll be sitting about 70 degrees, and um, yeah. So I'll get we'll get our score in just a second here. So as you can see, it's actually moving through the benchmark pretty quick at this. Um, yeah, see, it's done already. So we got a score of 500, and if you can see that, 572 CB. All right. Um, so that will be our overclock score. So now we're going to test some other games and such um, before we move on to our other clock speeds. Alright, so as far as GTA 5 is concerned, I'm using, uh, my, these are my settings on GTA. So, I have pretty much everything up all the way. These are the normal settings I play with. I play with a GTA, I have a GTX 980 in here, and I normally shoot, uh, I mean, I normally play uh, 1440p, the GTX 980, this is a 60Hz monitor. 
So these are the settings I use when I play GTA 5. I'm just going to leave them how they are. Um, with pretty much everything up all the way. I have like population density is one down from full. Population variety is one down from full. Distance scaling is up all the way. Everything is on very high. Uh, two, 2x reflection MSAA. And hey, let me turn off autofocus. Alright. Um, so I have grass quality. Everything's up all the way. I'm even using... Um, I'm using... 2x MSA. So I, these are the settings I don't play with. We're going to be using these. I'm not going to change them. I'm going to run them the same for all of our different frequencies. Run benchmark tests. Now. Wait. Let me. I got to start the. Wait. All right. I'm beginning the uh, benchmark in GTA. It's going to load in, and then we're going to go. So our maximum CPU temperature we got on this test was right here. You can see on core or on core one we hit 69 degrees on the CPU package. We hit 70 degrees um, during that test. So I mean it got up there. It's not terrible though. It's definitely cooler than we ran when we ran Cinebench. But um, those are the temperatures we were hitting. All right. You, you know what? I've just decided to skip the 3.5 gigahertz and the 2.5 gigahertz because it's just going to take time and it's not really going to be like. Like, who cares about those ones? I'm gonna go straight to 1.5 gigahertz and then 800 megahertz because it's gonna be a lot of work. And that's what I'm more interested in is the low clock speeds to see how much it changes. So I'm just gonna skip straight to those ones. All right, so you can see I've, turned, I've changed our CPU ratio on the all core setting to 15. So now we're gonna be running at 1500 megahertz. Sounds good to me. Wait, wait, I want, yeah. Save changes and exit. Yep, yep, do it. It's gonna be interesting. All right, first test at 1.5 gigahertz, Cinebench. Let's go, this is purely CPU based run. So we got 575 or something like that when we ran this at 3.9 gigahertz. I don't know if it's going to be like, I don't know if it scales megahertz for megahertz, we'll see. Um, I can already tell it's going a lot slower. So it's interesting. But that obviously should be going a lot slower. My question is, is it going like linear? Like if you plot these on a graph, is it going to be linear? How much slower is it going? Or is it going to be like a weird curve of clock speed? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you one interesting thing right now. This is our temperature before we ran the test. You can see we're at 100% load. It went up a tiny little bit. It barely rose in temperature and we're running the test right now over here. That's interesting. So we're barely, we're putting off a fraction of the no amount of heat. Because you can see before, when we're running this test, you know, you turn on your, uh, you, run, you start running the test, CPU goes up to 100%, and then it just shoots way up. Here, look at that, we're just barely rising. It's very interesting. So we're not putting off much heat out there, it just finished. And we got a score of, we got a score of 218 CB. So I finished all of my tests at uh, 3.9 gigahertz, which is my normal overclock that I run at, 1.5 gigahertz, and 800 megahertz, which is the lowest I can run my processor. Uh, so I knew that we were going to get lower scores at lower clock speeds, anybody knows that and knows anything about computers, but I wanted to see how much slower it, would gonna, it was going to be, how uh, what our temperatures were going to be like at those slower clock speeds, and if we could even play games at those clock speeds. And so here are our results. Um, so first we ran Cinebench, and for Cinebench, uh, it seemed to scale about what you would expect. So in Cinebench, we got a, at 800 megahertz, we got a score of 111, which was very slow. The test ran very slow. Uh, at 1500 megahertz, we got a score of 218, which was, I mean, it was okay. I mean, it was, it, the, the computer's definitely still usable, like 1.5 gigahertz. And then at 3.9 gigahertz, we got a score of 572, which is pretty good for an i5 4690K. Um, Next thing I ran was CSGO at max settings at 1440p, and I have my 4690K paired with a GTX 980. So just keep that in mind for these. So running at 3.9 gigahertz, I get an average FPS of 172, which is well over my 60 hertz, but I don't run VSync because it adds, don't worry about it. Anyway, <laughs> our max FPS was 252 and our minimum FPS was 87. So it's very responsive, it runs very well at 3.9 gigahertz. Um, at 1.5 gigahertz, it was definitely still playable um, with an average FPS of 55. 
Our max at 147 and our minimum was 32, but it was definitely still playable. I could tell that we were running at a lower clock speed. It was, um, I, I could definitely tell there was, it wasn't nice uh, and fluid like it is at a higher clock speed, but it was definitely still playable. And then at 800 megahertz, definitely not playable. Our max FPS was 39 frames per second. And our average was 18, uh, with a minimum of 10. It was not playable at all, especially for a game like CSGO that's very fast paced, that you need those, you know, really quick reaction times to be able to see, you know, and keep up with the game. Uh, so definitely not at 800 megahertz. Although I was surprised that I even got 18 FPS average at 800 megahertz. It's pretty good. Um, so it was interesting, and what else was interesting is the processor didn't heat up at all. The idle temperature and the full load temperature were the same. The processor doesn't heat up, so if I kind of want to try doing this without even having a CPU cooler on there, except it's kind of a hassle to pull off the CPU cooler. Next I ran GTA 5 at high settings at 1440p with my GTX 980 like I said. Um, and this was actually surprising. Uh, the lower clock speeds didn't affect the performance as much as it did in CSGO. At 3.9 GHz, I get an average FPS of 58 in GTA, a max FPS of 97, and a minimum of 8. Um, I don't normally hit 8, I think that might have been on the loading screen or something. I, I, don't, I would throw away that minimum FPS. Um, at 1.5 GHz, it was still playable, definitely. Uh, we got an average FPS of 48, a max FPS of 85, and a minimum FPS of 0.9. I don't throw away that minimum FPS also, I don't think that's even, I wouldn't pay attention to that. Um, at 800 megahertz, the game definitely slowed down a lot, but I was surprised at how well it was still performing. Um, at 800 megahertz, we were able to hit a 34 FPS average. That was, that was pretty good. Um, our max FPS was 63, and our min was, minimum FPS was 0.5. I would throw away that also, don't worry about that. But it was, I was surprised at how well it performed at, um, at 800 megahertz. So the game was still playable, I wouldn't recommend it. Obviously I wouldn't recommend doing this at all, why would you ever underclock the processor unless you're having heating issues, or er, temperature issues. But anyway, this just kind of goes to show, I was really curious at what the performance would be like underclocking a processor. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know why I find this stuff interesting, but I do. Um, if you find it interesting also, you can hit like. Uh, if you really like this kind of stuff, you can hit subscribe if you, if you thought it was a cool video. Um, yeah. So if you guys enjoyed this, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, if you guys enjoyed this. <laughs> it didn't make any sense, but whatever. Uh, and I will see you guys next week. Alright, bye.